In this episode of Woodland on the Web, I'll be working three examples of thermochemistry problems. In thermochemistry problems, it's important to remember the formula Q equals mc delta T, where Q is heat, m is mass, C is your specific heat capacity, and delta T is your change in temperature. And sometimes we also will substitute T2 minus T1 or T final minus T initial for delta T. So in this first example, if we read the problem and label as we go, it kind of helps us find the givens that we have so that we can figure out what exactly we still need to figure out. So if the temperature of 34.4 grams, grams is always mass, of ethanol increases from 25, so that means that's the initial or T1, and it goes up to 78.8, that's my T2 or my final, how much heat has been absorbed by the ethanol? And the specific heat is given to me as 2.44 joules per gram degree Celsius. So after listing our givens, we find that we are missing Q, but it does say how much heat, so it makes sense that Q should be blank. We should keep in mind that Q should be found in units of joules. So for this particular one, we're gonna plug in directly into Q equals MC delta T. So Q is gonna equal my mass, which again was 34.4. And again, showing all of my units is very important here because it helps us figure out if we are on the right track with how we've set up our problem. So I'm going to write joules per gram degree Celsius so that it looks more like a fraction so that we can then see um, that the, our units are dividing out. So T2 minus T1 is how you find your delta T. So we can also just go ahead and find that first. 78.8 minus 25.0 is going to give me 53.8 degrees Celsius. So that's my delta T. So in this problem, I'm just doing straight multiplication. I have 34.4 times 2.44 times 53.8. But again, let's double check that our units divide out. So because grams is on the bottom here in the specific heat value, and this is on the top since they're being multiplied, those two will divide out. And the same is true for my degrees Celsius, leaving me with just joules, which is a unit of heat. So again, that's how I know that I've probably set the problem up correctly. So when I do my multiplication, I get 4515.7568 joules, and that is an awful lot of significant figures. So in looking at the problem, all of those values have three sig figs, which means that it's going to be better for us to round this answer to three sig figs if we're trying to be accurate as far as measurement. So I would round that to um, 4,520 joules. Okay, so in this example, I have a 4.50 gram nugget of gold, um, and the fact that it says gold right there is how I would know that this is the specific heat, because I could look that up off of a specific heat table, considering that that is a physical constant for a substance. So by indicating that it's gold, I can also look up that it's that number. It absorbs 267 joules of heat, so that would be the quantity of heat, or Q. What is the final temperature? So what is my T2 of the gold if the initial temperature was 25 degrees Celsius? And again, my specific heat is 0.129. So in this case, I'm actually going to be solving for the variable T2. Um, but for sake of ease, I think I'm going to change this a little bit to where we deal with this as delta T first. So if, as long as you recognize that temperature is going to be related to delta T, this will be a little bit easier way to solve this, re requiring a little bit less algebra for your working equation. So delta T itself is its own variable. It's just like the letter X, even though it's two characters. So we're going to try solving for delta T this time. So my formula is still Q equals MC delta T, but my working equation for this problem is going to be Q over... MC. So looking at the corner over here, this is all multiplication. So if I want to get rid of two of these variables, I need to divide the, both sides by that, which is going to end up giving me Q over MC. So then when I go to plug in with my units, Q is going to be 267 joules on top, 
my mass was 4.50 grams, and my specific heat is 0 0.129 joules per gram degree Celsius. Um, and again, these units actually do divide out um, so that I end up with degrees Celsius on top. You have to think about the fact that you're dividing by a fraction, and that means that you're actually multiplying by a reciprocal as far as your units go. Or you can just trust me that degrees Celsius ends up back on top as your final unit. Okay, so when I work out my math, I get a delta T of a positive 459 point blah 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 degrees Celsius. Let's see, it's 0.9 something something. And again, I have three sig figs like in the last problem, so I'm going to round that to 460, but with a decimal to give me three significant figures. So 460 degrees Celsius is my delta T. So remembering that delta T is actually T2 minus T1, then if I'm trying to figure out my T2, if I solve for that, T2 is going to be if I add T1 to both sides. So it's going to be 460 plus my T1, which was 25 degrees Celsius. And so my final answer for my final temperature is going to be 485 degrees Celsius. So in this final example, I have a 155 gram sample of an unknown substance this time that was heated from basically room temperature up to 40 degrees Celsius. It's going to absorb that amount of heat. And this question is, what is the specific heat? The reason that this might be useful is because you could actually identify the substance based on the specific heat because specific heat is a physical property, just like density is a physical property of a certain substance. So this time I'm actually solving for C, which means I'm going to have my quantity of heat over everything else, which is my mass and my change in temperature. Okay, so if I plug in my values, I have 5696 joules on top. I have my amount in grams and my temperature change, which is 40 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, do be very careful when plugging this into your calculator because you have this value on top, but then you want to make sure that you're designated parentheses around this entire thing. So you'd actually want two sets of open parentheses and two sets of closed parentheses. And when you do your math, you get 2.45. Notice none of my units divide out, and that's because the unit for specific heat is joules per gram degree Celsius. And so if we go back and look at the previous problem, in example one, we saw that ethanol's specific heat was 2.45 or 2.44. So it's pretty likely that we could assume that this substance is actually ethanol. So those are a few examples of one-step thermochemical problems. Stay tuned and we'll be working some examples of calorimetry problems when we mixed hot and cold things together.